So I want you to imagine yourself in your grave and the angels, they approach you. They ask you the three all important questions to see if you pass the test of life. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your prophet? Imagine you're in that state right now. Will you be able to answer those questions? You need to live by these answers so you can answer them in your grave. But a person can't live by something that he or she does not know. So you have to learn these things. For that reason, we have a Islamic studies program and we'd like to invite you to take a look at the program by joining our Telegram group at the link below. And if you like it, inshallah ta'ala, and you think this is something that could be suitable for you and you may be able to learn that your deen here, then you can register for the first year of our program. And hopefully, we see you on the other side. Assalamu alaikum. InshaAllah ta'ala in today's class we will take those who inherit from the women. Al-warithatu min al-nisa. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira amma ba'd. Al-warithatu min al-nisa. Those who inherit from the women, those who inherit from the women. Female inheritors. How many things there are? 10. Uh, does anyone differ with that? Why does the poet though, why does the poet though say وَالْوَارِثَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ سَبْعُ لَمْ يُعْطِ أُنْثَ غَيْرَهُنَّ شَرْعُ Poet he says, Sahib al rahbiya those who inherit from the women, the female inheritors are seven. But you're right. هَذَا بِطَرِيقِ الْبَسْطِ they call it. Right? Why do they say seven? وَالْوَارِثَاتُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ سَبْعُ لَمْ يُعْطِ أُنْثَ غَيْرَهُنَّ الشَّرْعُ Right? And then he says بِنْتٌ وَبِنْتُ بْنٍ وَأُمٌ مُشْفِقَةٌ First one that he mentions is بِنْت بِنْتٌ Which means Daughter what does that say? Bintul Ibn. Bintul Ibn. What would that be? The granddaughter. How many is that? Two, right? Bintun wa bintul ibni. Bintun wa bintu ibnin. Wa ummun mushfiqa. The third one that the poet mentions is your caring mother. Wa zawjatun wa jaddatun wa mu'tiqa. Next part of the line of poetry says Zoja. Who's the Zoja? Everybody knows that though, right? Number five is the Mu'tiqa. Zoja, la. He mentions Jeddah in the line of poetry. We'll just go with how it's mentioned in the line of poetry. Jeddah. What's the Jeddah, brothers? Grandmother. Number six, what is mentioned in the line of poetry is the female who freed a slave, but we leave her last, inshallah ta'ala, okay? Then he says, وَالْأُخْتُ مِنْ أَيِّ الْجِهَاتِ كَانَتْ أُخْت, what does أُخْت mean? Sister. فَهَذِهِ عِدَّتُهُنَّ بَانَتْ مُعْتِقَةً The woman who freed a slave. How many is that all together? What in? Sorry? Bint al Ibn. Okay, so you have Bint and you have Ibn. You have a daughter and you have a son. Your son, right? InshaAllah Ta'ala, you'll call your son. Yahya, Abu Yahya. Right, Ahmed will have, inshallah ta'ala, a son called Yahya. And then Yahya gives, not gives birth, but you know, he gets married and then she ends up giving birth. Of course, today they might say that Yahya gives birth, right? Yahya gets married and then his wife gives birth. 
Why is she now to Yahya? His son. What is Yahya now to you? Your son. Then what is the daughter of Yahya to you? In Taliban. Granddaughter. Wadih. Make sense so far? How many is that? Seven. What's your name? Abdurrahman. Earlier Abdurrahman said, those who inherit from the women are ten. And then he thought he made a mistake. I told him after that he was right as well. Right? Uh. And that is because some of these points, they branch out. Like, what does that say here? Jeddah, right? Who's your Jeddah? Grandmother. How many do you have? Right? So you passed away and you left behind a paternal and a maternal grandmother. They both are from the inheritors. Make sense? So I'm going to write next to it in pink paternal and the P and the M are for Jeddah, not Zoja. There isn't a paternal wife and a, pater and a maternal. Wadih? We know we have two what? Grandmothers, right? Taib. Ukht. Before we move on to the Ukht, how many are we on now? Eight. Abdurrahman said ten, right? And we said that he was correct. And yeah, who do you think is left? So you have a full sister, which is here, right? What other kind of sisters do you normally have as well? Huh? Half sisters from your dad's side, half sisters from your mom's side. When we say P, we mean paternal. How many is that all together, brothers? Ten. Clear so far? Pretty straightforward, right? وَالْأُخْتُ مِنْ أَيِّ الْجِهَاتِ كَانَتْ The poet he says, وَالْأُخْتُ مِنْ أَيِّ الْجِهَاتِ كَانَتْ From whatever direction he comes from. The full sister, the half sister from your mom's side, the half sister from your dad's side. Does everybody have that conceptualized in their brain? Right? For example now, my dad gets married to other than my mom, has kids, right? Allah Azza wa blesses him with a daughter. What does that daughter of his, right? What's her relationship to me? Half sister from? That side. Taib. My mom, she separates from my dad, then gets married. She has children. She ends up having a daughter. What does that daughter have to do with me? She's my half-sister from mom's side. Make sense? Can you see how it stimulates the brain? The more you work your brain, this is the riyadah of the brain. This exercise of the brain, the more you become what? Ibn al-Qim actually says this. When speaking about memorization or whatever, right? He says it's like riyadah. It is like sports. Can anybody here just go into the gym and start picking up 200 kilos? And he's never been to the gym before? That's your Ahmed, huh? Huh? Allahumma barik. Huh? You have to what? Train. Get used to it. Right? Your muscles rip. And then they reform. Make sense? Your memorization is like that as well. And these kind of equations, what it does, it works the mind. It makes it much, much more stronger. Right? And smarter. Is everybody with me so far? Who can repeat the seven or the ten? Yes. 
تفضل والوارثات من النساء سبع Why is not in the wife for? <laughs> huh? It's a continuation from our conversation earlier, right? And why is not with the wife for? Did we start with the wife? No. Leave her. Yeah. Yeah? You've got the mother, you've got the grandmother. An easy way to maybe remember is what we learnt with yeah. the male inheritance. Go up and then go down. No, no, just start with the top. Who's at the top? The mother, the mother and the grandmother. And the grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. And then the daughter, the, um, the granddaughter. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got someone on top of her. Yeah, you got the daughter. Hey, the daughter? And the granddaughter. Granddaughter, excellent. How many is that? That's four. Oh, yeah? Then you got the sister, the paternal sister, the maternal sister. Are we going to put her on the left or the right? The right. The brothers for the brothers. The brothers for the male, the brothers for the brothers. Are on which side? The right side. The right. I stay, stick with the right. So that's three. Type. Oh, yeah? And then you've got the wife, and then you've got the one who freed the slave. So There's one left. Mm. <laughs> Early when we said up, got the paternal, who's at the top? Paternal grandmother. Now you got the mother? Yeah. And you got grandmother. two on yeah. top of her. So there's three at the top now. No. So how many at the top? Three. How many at the bottom? Two. How many on the right? Where the sisters are, right? How many? Three. Three. How are you the other side? Who's on the other side? There isn't. Oh, yeah. So you have what? The wife then and also the one who freed the slave. Ahmed, may Allah honor you. Just don't start with the wife again, huh? <laughs> Hey, anyone else who can break it down in this manner? So we don't have anybody on the left now, right? We have guys, not guys, but people at the top, people at the bottom, people on the right. And then you have the two who always are coming in externally. Hey, is this the way to remember? Very easy way to remember. Huh? Habibi, the Maghrib, so tal. Huh? I just had to pick on you, huh? Because you're in Maghrib, you Okay, so... <coughs> so you have the mother. Start from the top. The mo- mother, yeah. The mother, and then uh, two grandmothers, paternal and maternal. You have a daughter and a granddaughter. Then on the right, you have... Four when sisters. you say granddaughter, make sure you guys mention Bintilibin. Right? Because also your daughter's daughter is your granddaughter. But she's not from the inheritance. Why? Because there is what? There's one in between. Okay, so make sure you mention your granddaughter, but from the son. How many are we on? Three at the top, two at the bottom, that's five so far. You've got another five left. Okay, so full sister, maternal sister, and uh, paternal sister. Then she on, are they on the right or the left? On the right. The right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then the woman that freed the slave and the wife. The wife. The one that Ahmed started with. <laughs> What's your name, Akhi? Khalid. What we went through today is, right? Those who inherit from that female from the women the female inheritors look female inheritors right our brothers they came all the way from east london so we're going to have to explain it one last time i need one last brother inshallah ta'ala and they got caught up in traffic i think there was an accident huh who wants to mention everything again inshallah ta'ala who inherits from the female or from the women Right, Do you guys remember, right? Last week we talked about who's at the top, who's at the bottom, on the left and the right, and then the two that come into the equation, right, from the outside, right? The wife, not the wife, the husband, and also the one who freed the slave. So 13, people at the top, people at the bottom, people on the left, and people on the right. 
and then two that come in. It's just a way to remember. And I told you guys, it was a Sudani brother who taught me that. Right? No other teacher ever taught me that. A brother who I have to now listen to in order for him to pass the exam so he can enter into the halakha. And he's saying, I've got a very nice way of remembering it. And Allah, alhamdulillah, has benefited everybody here. Right, so you have the mother, the grandmother. The, there's two grandparents, so the, from the mother's so side. So who's at the top? The mother. Mother. Yeah. Yeah. And then the grandmother from um, paternal side, maternal side. And we also say we're in no. um, So how many is all together? Three at the top. Yeah, three. And those are the bottom. Then you have the daughter and uh, Bint Alibin, the granddaughter from the um, son. son. Then on the right you have the full sister, the half sister from the maternal side and the paternal side. How many is all together now? Two at the bottom and then three more on the right, five, six, seven, um, so seven, sure. and then there's nothing on the left. No, 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 three. No, okay, you have. How many at the top? Uh, one, four, three. 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 Your mum, your two grandmothers. Okay. Right? That's three at the top. As opposed to the male inheritors. How many at the top are the male inheritors? Uh, two. And then you have. Um, What's left? We have the wife and the one who just the woman who Excellent. Slave. So three at the top, two at the bottom, three on the right side. Don't make them in Ashab al Shimal, huh? Ashab al Yameen. Right? Those who pick up their book, inshallah ta'ala, from the right side. That's how we remember the right side. So the women. So three at the top, two at the bottom. How many on the right side? Three. And then those two will come in from the outside. They are the wife and also. Excellent. Well done, brothers. Allah, that's amazing. You guys understood that and memorized it? That's very, very amazing. Uh, you know, the, um, the mother, how come her daughter in Paris, that's your sister, is the connection is a, the connection is a woman? You mean the. Uh, the li um. Yeah. There's one scenario, what happened with Because there's a unanimous agreement on it. That's basically something that. Is outside of the qa'ida that we mentioned. Yeah? I know which one you're talking about. And I think one of the other brothers raised that last week as well. Bil ijma'. Huh? Because there's a, a recitation of, a, I think it's Qira'at ibn Mas'ud. Ikhwatun ay li um in the Quran. Huh? A couple of weeks ago, brothers, we talked about those who have infinite shares of what is left behind. You guys remember that? They are referred to in the Sharia as Ashabul Furud. Ashabul Furud. Okay? Those who have infinite shares. You guys remember? Right? They have an allocated amount that is specified to them in the Quran. Right? And there are how many fractions? Six. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allocated a specific amount to. The moment an individual passes away, right? There are those who are going to come and take their share. Right? From the wealth that has been left behind and also from the assets that have been left behind. Right? Are you guys with me? Did I say infinite or definite? I think I meant definite shares. Infinite. Sounds like infinity. Huh? Not definite share, that's a ton. Okay? So if Ashab al Furud, those who are entitled to definite shares of the assets that have been left behind. Anything with value, right? Whether it is money, whether it is a car, whether it is property, whether it is land, right? They have definite shares. They are in the Sharia referred to as Ashabul Furud. Ashabul Furud. Who remembers the six fractions very, very quickly? Huh? Um, first group, which is half, quarter, and an eighth. Excellent. Half, half, half. Half, quarter, eighth. Hey, yeah. Next one. And then the second group, which is a third. Two no, no, no. Start with what our sister benefited us with. What's half of two thirds? Third. What's half of the third? Sixth. Our sister, may Allah Azza wa Jal honor her, she said 
right? We can apply the same principle as we did with the first group. You have two thirds, you half that, you get a third. And then you half a third, you get a sixth. A little bit like halving a half, you get a quarter. Halving that quarter, you get an eighth. It's just an easy way to remember. You can memorize it like the brother done. There's nothing wrong with that. But all of these are ways of easily remembering it. Huh? May Allah reward our sister. Tayyib. What are we going to write here? Definite shares, right? Tayyib, what are we going to put here? Those we inherit by way of ta'asib. Which means, what's my favorite word? Residuary beneficiary. Which basically means that they take the remainder, the remainder, sorry. Huh? And inshallah ta'ala, for each category, I will give you guys examples of those who inherit in that way. And you look a little bit confused. Huh? Residuary beneficiary. When translated into more simpler English, it means after you've given everyone their definite share, there is a remainder. Sah? Who do you then give it to? Those of this category. The residuary beneficiary. Wadih? Those who take the remainder. We'll put that in brackets. Residuary beneficiaries. Make sense? Residuary beneficiaries. Wadih? Tayyib. Then we have a third category, brothers and sisters. Okay, there are those who inherit. There are those who inher inherit. At times, they are entitled to definite shares. And there are times, they become residuary beneficiaries. It can't happen at the same time. Sometimes they are of this category, and sometimes. They are what? Residuary beneficiaries. Meaning, they will only take if there is that which remains. Make sense? So how should we try to translate this in English? Sometimes, they are entitled to definite shares. Sometimes entitled to definite shares. And other times, you guys can put that in your own English. And other times, they are residuary beneficiaries. Right? And then there's a final category. Huh. Dig another pen. Hmm. Alladhina yarithuna bil furudi wa ta'asibi ma'a. Alladhina yarithuna bil furudi wa ta'asibi ma'a. Which basically means. They may be entitled to definite shares, while at the same time, if there's something left, they take that as well. An example of someone who is entitled to definite shares. A father. How much is the father entitled to? Six. Don't worry, we'll come on to all of that as well. But for the time being, I gave you guys some fractions, right? And some inheritors and what they are entitled to. Father is one of those who has been allocated a definite share. How much does he get? A sixth. Right? Come 
coming to that. Huh? I'm going to come to that. Allah says in the Quran, وَلِأَبَوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمَ السُّدُسُ مِمَّا تَرَكْ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلَدٍ The father takes a six. The father takes a six if there is a child in the equation. Just take Abu Taymiyyah as an example. Is his father alive? Al-Sharif told us. Huh? Dad's still alive. And now, may Allah have mercy on the Hajj operators. Looks like a lot of them are going to go bust. Tayyib, my father is alive. What does Allah say in the Quran? The parents, they are entitled to a sixth if there is a child in the equation. Does Abu Taymiyyah have a child? Taymiyyah. Sah? So automatically, the father will get what? A sixth just for having a child in the equation. If you guys don't understand what I'm saying, don't worry about it now, right? Might be a little bit overwhelming. But I just want to get a point across to you guys. فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلَدٌ وَوَرِثَهُ أَبَوَاهُ فَلِأُمِّهِ أَوْ فَلِإِمِّهِ الثُّلُثِ According to Khalif al-Hamza. فَلِإِمِّهِ Assalamu alaykum. Are you brothers and sisters with me? Right? Allah then says, If there is no children in the equation, the father takes everything, And the mother takes the third. When we say everything, what does that remind you of? Which category? Everything. So after you give the mother her third, her definition, there is a remainder. Who takes it? Father. Tayyib. But we mentioned that the father, he has a sixth allocated to him. But then in another scenario, he's taking the remainder. Set portion. And then there's a scenario that he might take the remainder. Right? And there's another scenario, brothers. Right? He will take a sixth. And if there's something remaining, he's going to take that as well. Does that make sense? So what should we call this one? Definite shares plus the remainder. Yani in an equation, after he's given his sixth, right? And then every other individual who's entitled to a definite share is given theirs. Then there's some left. Who would you give it to? Father. This is what that basically means. Let me give you guys a quick mas'ala, inshallah ta'ala, right? Let's see if it works out as this part, inshallah. I'm going to try and fit it in here. I'll try to leave a place open. Tayyib. I pass away. I leave behind who? Father, mother, wife, or wives, and Taymiyyah. Huh? Father, mother, daughter, wife. Based on what we just quickly learned now, how much do the parents get? Is there a child in the equation? Type. How many does the father get? Six. Six. Mother takes a sixth as well. The daughter takes how much? Good. What about the wife? Eighth. Excellent. Hey, what's the base number? You have an eighth in the equation, you also have a sixth in the equation. Huh? Excellence. Very well done, brothers. MashaAllah, we're getting somewhere. So you have the first group and you also have the second group. First group. Which fraction do we have from the first group? Eighth. Eighth. And then you have what? The sixth as well from the second group. The base number is 24. Aye? Father gets a sixth. Taib, how much is the sixth of that? 
4 Mother 4 Taimia 12 Wife 3 Taib, add that up, do the maths 23 How much left? 1 Who takes it? Excellent Plus 1 How much is that all together? That makes the father from which category brothers also? And which other category as well? Second one as well he is from those who takes the remainder in certain scenarios. So, uh, sorry, I'll take that all back. Right? No, no, no. He's part of this one and he's part of that one as well. He's either going to get his definite share, which is sixth, as allocated to him in the Quran. Right? And there are scenarios after he's given his allocated definite share, there is a remainder. We give that to the dad as well. Make sense? Huh? Why does he get the remainder? Because he's part of this group as well. Right? I remember my teacher, I asked the same question. I said to my teacher, why is it that we can't give the remainder now to the brothers and the sisters that are alive? Right? Because I have brothers and sisters. He said to me, your dad's looking at you. Right? And you have all these brothers and sisters, your dad's looking at you. And you're going to go and give it to them? Anta wa ma lukali abik. As the Prophet sallallahu said, you and your wealth are possessed by who? Your father. Owned by your father. Not possessed, but owned by your father. Right? And I never forgot this example. Like imagine your dad's looking at you in maskeen. Huh? He's old in age. Doesn't work. All your brothers and sisters, mashallah, tabarakallah, they work, right? And he's looking at you. And you have something left. Who are you going to go and give it to? You're going to go to your father. Make sense? Take this also as a principle, yeah? As long as your father is alive, all your brothers and sisters, you can throw them out of the equation. I told all my brothers and sisters, listen. And that's the life, no one takes a single penny from my inheritance as long as he's alive. Everyone's like, oh wow, subhanAllah, they didn't know it worked like that. Yes, you don't take nothing. Right? As long as the father is alive, your brothers and sisters kick them out of the equation. I hope you guys don't forget that. I don't think you're going to forget that as well after that example. Okay? So this was the perfect example, right, to explain this one. Father, he takes what? A sixth? And I'll... How much were we giving him in that equation? Four. What else, what else did we give him? One. Ah, this is the remainder. And this was his allocated amount. Right? That Allah Azza wa prescribed for him in the Quran. Who can give me another example of someone who's Entitled to the definite shares. Mother. Huh? Mother. Mother, excellent. Jazakallah khair. How much does the mom get, brothers? Only a sixth? There are times when she might take a third. That's a comma, by the way, huh? It's a comma. Allah Azza wa Jal, what did he say? وَلِأَبْوَيْهِ لِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمْ أَسْتُدُسْ مِمَّا تَرَكْ إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ وَلَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلَدْ وَوَرِثَوْ أَبْوَاهِ فَلِأُمِّهِ الثُّلُثْ Put your hand up if you're single. (laughs) 
Ahmed, eh? Ahmed is our perfect example today. <laughs> Ahmed, you got parents, right? You got any children? Wives? That nobody knows about? That might have kids as well? Huh? Tayyib. You pass away tomorrow, how much do your parents get? Your father's alive, sah? Mom's alive. How much does your dad get? There's no children in the equation. Don't worry, when they get this and when they get that, we'll come on to all of that. There's durus coming of that. Like we will be taking shortly, inshallah ta'ala, well soon, ashabun nisf. Right? Those who are from the companions of half. Those who are the companions of a sixth. Those who are the companions of two-thirds. Right? So, your mom takes a third. Why? فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلَدْ وَوَرِثَهُ أَبْوَاهُ فَلِأُمِّهِ الثُّلُثِ أو فَلِأُمِّهِ الثُّلُثِ Right? Mom takes the third and the father takes the rest. واضح? طيب Mother is part of that. Who else is part of that category? Huh? Daughter. My daughter. Naam. Sahih. Daughter. She can sometimes take what? Half. And in some scenarios, the daughters with an S, they'll take two thirds and so on and so forth. But we'll come on to all of that, inshallah. Who else you think? Huh, Ahmed? Earlier you mentioned somebody. No, who you started with? <laughs> wife. Wife is entitled as well. How much are you entitled to? You're oppressing your wife now. Huh? Is that it? Eighth. She only gets an eighth if a condition is met. There's two. We're going to come on to all of the conditions when she takes an eighth, when she takes a fourth. Okay? There are times when she takes a fourth and times when she takes an eighth. Who else? Huh? Come on, brothers. Who's the opposite of a wife? Husband. Husband, brothers. How much does the husband get? Half and there are times when he might get a half and there's times when he might get a quarter. These are just some examples. I have a lot of right examples written down. Seven fall under the first category. Seven. But we won't go into all of that inshaAllah ta'ala as it may confuse you. As it may confuse you. Okay? I might send it to you guys as a PDF that you memorize. But now, without confusing the listener, we just brought some examples. All of these fractions are mentioned in the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal, right, He allocated these shares to them, these amounts to them, bi kitabillah, right? All written in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. وَلَكُمْ نَصْفُ مَا تَرَكِ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَلَهُنَّ ثُمُنْ وَلَكُمُ الرُّبُعْ إِلَى آخِرِهِ There's so many fractions that each has been allocated to. So if there is an allocated specific amount for inheritor, which category does he fall in? Huh? First category. Those who are entitled to definite shares. Make sense? Hope you guys wrote that down, yeah? Huh, how do you guys find Faraid? Hmm? Works the brain, sah? Tayyib. Some examples of the residuary beneficiary. Or the residuary beneficiaries. Ha. Huh. Uncle, excellent. Because we took that before, sah? Who else? Father sometimes gets a definite share of the remainder. 
No, but because he's been given a definite shia, we can't just like throw him in that category. This is only those who get remainder. He is someone who's entitled to a definite share and he will take the remainder if there's anything left. So that's why we have a separate category for him. Huh? Excellent. No. Right? All the brothers, huh? or should I say, not all of the brothers, because you have Akhun Li Um, which falls onto the top category. Taib, write down, brothers, full brothers, write that down, full brothers. Also the paternal brother. I have 12 written down that fall under this category. 12. Who else? Okay, let's learn a couple of new terms here, brothers. Anyone on top is referred to as al-usul. Usul. Anyone at the bottom is referred to as furu'. Those on the sides are referred to as hawashi. I'm just throwing that in. Make sense? Taib. Let's now look down a little bit. Uh, we always talk about Taymiyyah, how, how she's entitled to a half. What about now her brother? Imagine, let's just take Taymiyyah out of the equation. Imagine I had a son. Ahmed earlier he mentioned that he wants to name his son Yahya. Sahih? If you pass away and you leave behind Yahya, which category would Yahya fall into? You sure? Well, you're going to give him half. Yahya, the son of Ahmed, right, would fall under second category. He's a residuary beneficiary. Son. Probably think to yourself, how is he? It seems like he's getting less than the daughter. La, trust me. Huh? The son blocks out a lot of guys in the equation. Just me throwing this in now, right? As long as you have a son, brothers and your sisters, they take nothing. They block out the hawashi. They block out all of your uncles. Those on the left and those on the right as well. Because of that son. Right? Make sense? So you got uncles, you got also brothers, right? full brothers and the half paternal brother as for the half maternal brother he would fall under there but that's a discussion for another day which I don't want to con now at this moment in time confuse you guys with are you guys with me? so how many would fall under the first category? how many did I mention earlier? seven How many in the second category? Twelve. Now you have the third category. There are four. There are four. There are four. We mentioned here that sometimes they are entitled to definite shares. And at other times they what? They take the remainder. They take the remainder. Remember the question you asked me? Do you remember who was in the equation? Now the one that you messaged me about. Just tell us how many people are in the equation. So who passed away? Okay, a guy passed away. He left behind a wife, two daughters. Two sisters, a wife, two daughters, and two sisters, right? When you have a wife and you have daughters, the daughters, just to, you know, just mention this in passing without confusing you guys, 
they would be entitled to two thirds. The daughters. Which category are they from? Two thirds. Top one. They are entitled to a definite share. They have a fraction. Anyone with a fraction from the book of Allah, they fall under. Wadih. Also, sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal gave them an allocated amount. However, now you have daughters and you have sisters as well. Right? Generally speaking, they would drop them and kick them out of the equation. However, if there is something left, they would be falling under this category and taking that which remains. There's a qa'id, there's a principle which is extremely, extremely handy. And don't worry about it now. And it's one of my favorite qawaid. It saved me 14 points in one of my inheritance exams. Anybody who acted upon this principle, he got that extra 14 points. Whoever didn't, he dropped 14 points. Just like that with two questions. Why is that principle? al akhawatu ma'al banati asabat? I remember my teacher instilled that within me. He branded me with it. Wallahi. He would actually get physical with me at times as well. If I made a mistake, huh? not having applied this principle. Al-Akhawat, meaning sisters, with banat, daughters, makes them residuary beneficiaries. So in summary, I'll just quickly mention that. Allah Azza wa Jal allocated definite shares to the sisters. That would make them part of first category. However, there are times because of someone else in the equation, right? Because of someone else in the equation, they become residuary beneficiaries. So in that case, the fraction gets dropped. Fraction gets dropped. Right? If there is something left, they take it. Like the question that our brother asked me a couple of days ago, and then I calculated for him and sent it to him. There was what? Daughters in the equation, and there were sisters in the equation. Normally when you're told of an equation, sisters and daughters, right? You say straight away, Khalas, the sisters have been kicked out of the equation. But no, the qaida. Sisters with daughters makes the sisters residuary beneficiaries. Make sense? Remember how I earlier mentioned, as long as you have sons, it kicks out the brothers. Here, you've got daughters. Does it kick the sisters out? Hmm. If there is something left, they take it. Wadih? But anyways, that's a, we'll, get, we'll get to all of that inshaAllah ta'ala. There is four in that equation, or in this section, and then you also have, oh, subhanAllah. You have two in this part. Father and also, ah, Grandfather. The grandfather is part of this category as well. He is given his allocated amount, just like the father, a sixth. And then if there's something left, he would take that as well if he's in the equation. Wadih. And I gave you guys the example of if I was to pass away, who would take that which I leave behind? After we gave everyone their allocated amount, we gave them their definite shares. There was how many left out of the 24? One. Why didn't we give it to my brother? Because the father is alive. You and also your wealth is owned by Allah. Uh, no, uh, by your father. If you guys have understood Faraid up until this point, Allahumma barik. Right? You'll forget it if you don't revise it. I hope, inshallah ta'ala, with some of the methods that I gave you all, right? Okay? You're able to remember a lot of that which we mentioned. Especially now, al warithun min al rijal, the male inheritors. And then you also have female inheritors, right? Can we have one brother quickly, inshallah ta'ala, that can give me all the male inheritors and the female inheritors with the method that I went through? Huh. Ahmed? Tfadl. 
Ahmed has been the star of the show today. Allahumma barik. Come give us the brothers with the order. Don't start with the wife. No. Huh? Don't start with the wife. Just start with how? Explain it. Okay. Um, with the brothers, you have above, which is the father and the grandfather, and whoever's above that. Excellent. Bil and you have below the son and the grandson and whoever's below that and then to the side you have the brother who's the side the right okay the right <laughs> you have the brothers the full brothers paternal brothers maternal brothers and then the full brothers and paternal brothers kids excellent how many is that on that side that's five five how many at the top two two how many at the bottom two how much that's is that all together nine nine and then on the other side yeah. it's the uncles you have the full uncle the paternal uncle and their kids that's four so that four five four nine plus two eleven plus two thirteen, 13. and then you got two and then you've got the the husband and you've got the one who freed the slave how and many is that together fifteen yeah. well like brothers you know how quickly you guys learned it took me ages to get my head around the fifteen may Allah reward us Sudani brother Amen. right and hey, then the with the sisters, you have the mother, and the grandmother, and the paternal grandmother. And so you said mother. Yeah. And you said grandmother, and then the paternal grandmother. Yeah. So basically, paternal and maternal. Full yeah. <laughs> okay, no, no, And saying. anyone? And anyone above. So that's yeah. three at the top. Three at the top. And then you have the daughter, the granddaughter, and anyone below. Excellent. How so many is that? Five. five. Oh, yeah. And then you have the sisters, and. The, the paternal <laughs> maternal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's three sisters. The full sister, paternal, maternal. Paternal. That's three. That's three. How many at the top? Three. three. How many at the bottom? Two. Two. It's five. And three is eight. Yeah. And then you have the the wife and the one who freed the slave. Did everybody get that? Wasn't that difficult, right? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. And that's our lesson for today. Nabil, you've got a lot of catching up to do. Huh? <laughs> but MashaAllah, I think everybody who attended from the beginning, it's pretty clear. Everybody understood that. Jazakumullah khairan, brothers and sisters, for attending the class. I will stop there. I hope you guys are revising whatever we're taking in the inheritance class. Wallahi, I'm so proud of every single one of you guys. Wallahi. The fact that you guys have managed to get your next around what we've been taking, al warithuna min al-rijal, wal warithatu min al-nisai, right? And how to calculate the base number. And who is a residuary beneficiary? And who is what? Entitled to a definite share. Right? You guys have managed to understand that, inshallah, on your way to becoming Faradiyun. Huh? Sakum Lakhir. <laughs>